Recording. The new COVID vaccine from Johnson & Johnson that will arrive at sites across the country this week is the third vaccine authorized in the U.S., but it is the first to require only one shot. On the whole, demand for the vaccine still far outseeks the supply of doses available. Meanwhile, officials say the spread of new variants is very worrisome. Three point nine million doses already. Of that, the vast majority will be allocated to the states and local jurisdictions. Claire Hanna of the Association of Immunization Managers talked about the other distribution channels. 80,000 are going into the retail pharmacy program, so they'll be going directly to the pharmacies. 70,000 are going to large-scale clinic sites, and 90,000 are going to the FQHCs. So you know we should see them going into the arms of people this week. Federally qualified health centers. So this certainly helps boost supplies, but so far about 50 million people in the U.S. have received at least one dose, so that's 20% of the population, of the adult population. It is also interesting to see the numbers tick up over time. Johnson & Johnson vaccine isn't as effective overall at preventing coronavirus illness when you prepare it to Pfizer and Moderna. We have reporting on that. The studies show the Johnson & Johnson is about 66% effective overall in preventing COVID-19 illnesses compared to 95% of the Moderna and Pfizer. That does not sound so good, but what infectious disease experts keep saying and keep repeating is that the vaccine is very effective at preventing what's most important, hospitalizations and deaths. More than 90%, and with supplies so tight, there just is not another choice. Anthony Fauci stated, all three of the vaccines are really quite good and people should take the one that's most available to them. If you go to a place and you have Johnson & Johnson, that's the one that's available now, take it. And if you go to a place where they have the other ones, take it. So in the meantime, public health officials are concerned about these new variants and what is emerging. You've learned that vaccine markers are in the press, makers are in the process of developing booster shots to cover them. The COVID-19 virus, public health officials are concerned about the new variants that are emerging. The new vaccine markers, makers are in the process of developing booster shots to cover them. Will we all be getting COVID shots the way we get flu shots every autumn in October, November? That is possible. It is not exactly clear what will be needed, but all the vaccine makers are working on this. The virus has mutated, as we know, and we hear about n numerous variants emerging from South Africa and Brazil. And if you look at the results of the Johnson & Johnson trials in South Africa and Latin America, it was found to be about 61 to 64 percent effective against mild to moderate disease. The new variants from these regions were to spread. More vaccine makers could change their vaccines to affect the mutated viruses. Dr. Judy Guzman Cotrill of the Oregon Health Science University in Portland, Oregon states this. You could envision something similar for the COVID-19 vaccine next winter, where the vaccine covers many different strains or many different spike proteins that our bodies make antibodies against. This will cover the many different variants. The final chapter in vaccinating against coronavirus has not been written. The majority of the country has not been vaccinated yet. Many people are still vulnerable. It is not entirely clear if people who have gotten the vaccine can get infected and spread the virus again. Even though they're protected from getting sick, they could play a role in transmission. This risk seems quite low given the initial data that's coming from Israel and elsewhere. Yet, Judy Guzman Cotrell of Portland, Oregon states the science is still unfolding. So the CDC guidance states vaccinated people should continue to wear masks and take other precautions. Until these transmission studies are completed and I've re reviewed them myself, I will still be wearing a mask when I'm around other people because I know that this will protect those who are not vaccinated around me, including my own children, said Guzman Cotrill from OHSU in Portland, Oregon. 
the CDC director, Rochelle Walensky, has said this is very concerning. Dr. Fauci states, our baseline of daily infections now, and even though it's on the way from where it was, is down by around 70,000. But you've got to get that baseline down lower than that, particularly in light of the fact that we have some worrisome variants. So it is really too premature to now to be pulling back very much. The National Institute of Health has a new initiative to expand research on long haulers. These are people who get symptoms from COVID that last for months and months. A new study from the University of Washington found six months post-COVID, and a third of the people enrolled in the study had lingering symptoms, including fatigue, states Dr. Helen Chu. Quote, it did surprise us because a lot of the previous studies were done in hospitalized individuals, and so in those studies, they did find high rates of persistent symptoms. But ours was a study that was primary outpatients, so, so those who had mild diseases and were never seen in clinics, and definitely were not hospitalized. So they were really people who had a mild case of coronavirus. And they, con they continued to have these symptoms six months later. This is not clear why. Stopped 